Thank you very much for your time, Ralph. Just to, uh, to start off with, if I may, with the, the victory the other night, you're, you're kind of you're safe now, but I kind of want to ask what sort of plans you have in place now to take forward for the rest of the season and looking forward to recruitment and for next season because the job never sits still and you're kind of looking forward now for next season. Is, is How are those plans in place and how much has it been affected maybe by coronavirus as well? Yeah, at first, uh, we have uh, five more games to play and um, we have uh, massive targets to, to focus on. The first is, I think since I'm here, we, we never won three games in a row. So uh, this is the first target we absolutely want to yeah, get uh, with, with the game against Everton now. A uh, big, big uh, chance to, to make a third win. And I think uh, we go there with a lot of self-confidence in a away game. We know that we away showed some good games this season. Yeah, and then also uh, we are now, I think, in touch with all the clubs uh, in front of us. And uh, I think they, they to, to climb one or two positions in the table would be fantastic uh, for, for us, uh, not uh, being part of this relegation zone of this final third. Maybe in the middle third would be a very, very yeah, good step uh, forward in our development uh, when you know where we are coming from. Um, I think the last 21 games we took 35 points, so it was the fifth most in the league. And uh, this shows our current form. We have uh, definitely after the uh, restart uh, shown some good uh, games and yeah, uh, keep on doing. Ralph, can I ask you about one of the peculiarities of, of when Project Restart got the Premier League going again, is the drinks breaks. and. How are you a fan of the drinks breaks, given the fact that it was initially brought in because the players, they were worried about fatigue and injury and maybe a little bit of hot weather. But it seems like we have four quarters of play and tactical timeouts. How do you view the drinks break and are you a fan? Yeah, I think it's every, every, every manager is a fan from this because um, you get a chance for one minute uh, and set a few, a few messages uh, easier. Uh, I must say it's always easier now for us to manage at all because uh, we have also during the game uh, it's much easier to reach even the player on the other side of the pitch to give him some advices and uh, this is this makes our job easier and um, this is another chance to, to have an influence on the player. But also for the players I think the games are still very intense. We had on the weekend uh, 123 kilometers distance for the whole team, eight more than Man City. And you can imagine uh, when it's a little bit warmer in the moment, then it's, it's quite tough for the guys, even if you play in the evening. And with this short preseason, I think it was absolutely the right decision. And uh, um, when you see our next two weeks fixtures, it's unbelievable. We play now Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Sunday. So it's, 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 it's four games in a row. And, and uh, we don't think have uh, to discuss about one minute uh, drinking break in a, in a half time. So it's... It's absolutely okay for me and I think for the players also. And, and Ralph, how are you finding, again, another peculiarity of, of, of the restart? Um, the lack of crowds means that any tactical information you're giving from the sideline during the game, everyone can hear what you're saying. <laughs> have, you, have, you had to, yeah, have you had to change the way perhaps you get messages across or you know, little tidbits to certain players during a game? Because... Your opposite number could be five yards away from you and he can hear everything you're saying. Yeah, I know. It's, I think uh, they must sometimes think we are stupid, we managers, especially when you're really shouting 90 minutes like in the last game. I know that we had a big, uh, big crowd that is watching. Uh, it was, I think, the most watched Premier League game all, all time. And everybody could hear that I was 90 minutes <laughs> pushing my players forward or, or pressing or whatever. Um, yeah, you don't think about what you can say and what not because uh, you, you coach or you manage from outside like you do in the sessions or when you, when, you, when you are in the training session, you do the same. And in the end, yeah, I know that, that uh, everybody can hear what you say, but it's, it's, it's not important because the details are necessary for the players and the benefit you get out of coaching from outside is, 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 is a higher than the risk that somebody else hears it and, 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 and takes it. And I think, yes, we, we have, we have uh, I think we see managers uh, coaching much more from outside now because it's possible. 
Thank you, Ralph. I think those are my uh, my three questions. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. We will go to Paul at the Premier League. Hi, Ralph. Hello. Hi, thanks very much for this. Um, you mentioned the remarkable number of kilometres your, your team ran on, on Sunday. How, how tired is the squad after what must have been a, a pretty draining, even though it was an exhilarating game? And what's that done for your, for your team news? Who's, who's out? Who, who can come back? Yeah, I think uh, they quite felt this game. Uh, so it was really hard for them to take. Uh, but uh, we knew that uh, we have to, to do such a, such a workload. Otherwise, uh, yeah, the chances are not very high to pick something against Man City. But you know, every time when you then get something for it and, and win three points, then I think uh, the recovery is even easier and goes quicker because uh, you uh, you enjoyed it so much and the positive atmosphere you feel in a moment here is is something that gives you also lift we, we didn't train the last two days so we had only recovery and uh, short time in the pitch only but today a little bit box and, and that's it and yeah try to to be sharp again on thursday uh, in the moment it looks that we have another injury with with musa yeah it's, it's not a coincidence players they they had a uh, yeah, longer time off now, like he had with his suspension, uh, less training, less games. They are sometimes more struggling with his intense program and then the, the, the injuries are coming earlier or, or easier than, than with the guys they are always playing now. They have a different level of, 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 of um, yeah, physical, uh, physical strength in the moment. And um, yeah, so we have a few injuries at the moment. So uh, I cannot uh, say how many changes are made on Thursday, but um, yeah, we must have a look. In the moment, they're a little bit tired, but tomorrow we have one session and then we can decide if somebody is still not uh, able to play on Thursday. But I think uh, with every day and good sleeping and good eating, and uh, we have now more chances for treatment here in, inside the building. So we, we have to do this and we do this now. And your opponents on Thursday, Everton, they played last night. What did you make of their performance against Spurs and in general how they've been since the restart? Yeah, I think uh, we know that it will be not 1% uh, easier than uh, on Sunday. This is for sure. It's also a very, very good team with a lot of quality. Uh, they had uh, some fantastic results, uh, played at home, uh, draw against uh, the champion. So you know how difficult it is to go there. Uh, we lost the first game also against them, so we have to do some things better to perform against them better. And uh, yeah, it would be a really tough challenge for us. But uh, yeah, we go there with a lot of club confidence and we want to be brave. And how about Carlo Ancelotti, Ralph? You were title rivals in your season together in the Bundesliga what was what was he like in in that battle were you at each other's throats in every press conference oh, he's a fantastic guy I think he he's so long in the business has, has won so many titles he's one of the biggest managers in the moment around in football and uh, that uh, it was a, a joy for me enjoy it very much to 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 battle with him and and uh, yeah, it will be sure interesting game and an interesting uh, meeting. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. We'll go to Simon Peake at the Club Association. Hi, Ralph. Hello. Hope you can hear me. Congratulations on the other day. Um, okay. It was pretty exhausting watching you guys. Never mind. Uh, playing in it. Um, you only made one change in the 90 minutes though. I know you made one in stoppage time, but you only brought Shane Long in the 90. How, how are you getting your players to compete at such a exhausting level for, for so long without, I know you said Moose has picked up a, an injury of some kind, but it does, you seem to be making a lot less subs than other, other managers. Oh, yeah, but I had, uh, at first I must say that we do, especially our, our athletic coaches and the physios and profs do a fantastic job in this club, to be honest. 
uh, the level they, they came back after the lockdown was amazing. Yeah, I and mean, that was a chance for us to immediately step up with yeah, developing our game. And um, so um, when we heard about uh, the possibility we can make five changes now, um, you must always pay attention. I had uh, a few conversations with some managers in Germany and they said, uh, they had problems when they change too much during the game because um, you lose your your automatism, you lose your in set pieces, maybe uh, some some minimal uh, automatism you 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 normally have, and that then cost you in the end some 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 important points. And um, this was a warning for me, but it doesn't mean that I don't want to sub uh, my 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 tired players, but. The moment when you do it is, is important and um, as long as they are fit and as long as they can run and fight, I think um, the system works and it's not a coincidence that they are playing from the beginning. I have some alternatives on the bench and I trust them absolutely, but it's always about uh, in what position in the game you are when you can change it or not. You, you've obviously got another day of training to go, but are you expecting anyone to be back? And what is the case with Musa? Is it a muscle injury? Or? Yeah, it's, it's a calf injury. Um, so Musa out. Yannick would also not make it on the Thursday with his uh, quad injury. Uh, Sofian also out um, still. Um, young Valerie with uh, a muscle injury also out. So you see this, this, this first... Uh, Two or three weeks now have also had an impact in our in our players, but uh, so um, Pierre can be an option for the bench. Uh, that is quite possible, and yeah, the rest we have a look. And finally, it's hard to pick out two standout performers from the other day, but just two people individual wanted to ask about Alex McCarthy. Just how how impressed you've been by the way he's reacted to to the Arsenal game, and and Jack Stevens is a player that has been around the club for a very long time, but has really kicked on as much as perhaps he could have until recently. Have you been really impressed? And is there anything you've been working on with him in particular? I think both players um, showed in this season some fantastic games, but also some inconsistent ones. And uh, uh, I'm very hard demanding on, on, on developing of both because I know they have both immense potential for yeah, reaching the highest level. And uh, especially Czech, we had in the preseason some uh, important meetings where I wanted to show him what I expect from him. And uh, I think he he needs this. Yeah, he needs to feel the trust, but he also needs sometimes a little bit of a kick yeah, that he, he he reaches the highest level. And I think this is important. We we have. Um, with Alex, a goalkeeper that uh, has a lot of qualities and we are in the moment uh, developing, especially his game with the ball. When you see, for example, uh, Anderson from, from, from uh, Edinson from, from Man City in the last game, he's maybe the best uh, footballing goalkeeper in the league. And uh, this is uh, a target he must have. He must also develop his game. I know he, he run through a, a different development as a goalkeeper because in, in his time, uh, the, the goalkeeper training looks completely different than today. But if you are open-minded and if you stay open-minded and you learn new things, then you can also develop a game with the ball. And we are in a moment, uh, a lot of work doing with, with him in this part of, it, of his game. And it shows that um, that doesn't mean that you, you make less saves on the line. So it's, it's both is the best, the best combination. and, and uh, like in every other player where we try to develop every part of this game, we also do it with our coaches. Thanks and good luck Thursday. Thank you. Next time we'll go to Andrew Moon at BBC South. Hi Ralph, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, Ralph, just sort of touching on what, what Simon had said there, um, you conceded 55 goals this season, but obviously the defence has improved, another good clean sheet at the weekend. Uh, how and why do you think your team have improved defensively throughout this season? Yeah, uh, 55 are definitely uh, still too much, uh, <clears throat> much too much. <laughs> so I think uh, for 
the biggest change we made in the season was definitely the change of the shape to the back four. Since we played then, as I said, we took much more points. And I think in the end, uh, we have we have not the less good organized team, but um, in the end, it's about also sometimes blocking shots around the box. And there, the mentality, the character, the character was not always um, what it is in the moment. And so this is the reason why we, in a moment, get more yeah, blocked shots. Uh, you can say we have more luck. But luck is something you have to, to work on. And if you invest more, also the big teams uh, give, give some chances for the opponent. But then in the end, they're blocking the shots with everything they have. They're defending their goal with everything they have, with the quality they have. And this is, yeah, absolutely necessary. No team in the world uh, plays a perfect game so that the opponent has not one chance. So if they have a chance, it's a low scoring sport. So that means. When you go one down, it's always difficult. So you have to do everything to have a clean sheet. And I think in the last games, you could feel that we are investing more in, in defending our own box, in, in, in defending or in blocking shots and everything, because this is also part of, of defending. It's not always high pressing and winning balls and scoring. It's also sometimes sitting deep and defending their own box. Everton are a team who consistently seem to finish around that seventh and eighth spot in the division, maybe just outside the top six. Is that where you want Southampton to be in the, the short and medium term in the table? Yeah, maximum in the medium term, because in this season, I think um, we are uh, coming from far behind and uh, we are very happy that we are in this position now, but uh, you never know. Uh, we feel in a moment that we're building on something up here in this club and we're not really taking care so much about what position we are in the moment. We want to win games. And as I said, uh, every Premier League game, you have the chance to do it, so then uh, take it. And uh, we have in the, fourth, the first four games, we have, we have won three. And uh, yeah, now we are hungry still to, to, uh, to win as much as possible. Finally, now you are obviously safe from relegation. Will you look to perhaps give some youngsters a go or, or, or maybe fringe players an opportunity in your squad? I want to give players a chance. They deserve to have a chance. Uh, if it's young or old, it doesn't matter for me. Yeah? Um, sure, I want to see who, who is um, um, ready for, for, for this challenge, especially from the young lads. So, um, especially in the next week when we have a lot of games uh, with two or two, three days uh, break only, then it's automatically that we will change a few players. But uh, yeah, they must deserve to to to. to to get a chance to play and therefore they have to work hard. Thanks, Ralph. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, we'll go to Ian at TalkSport. Hi, Ralph. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> um, can I ask about, it? this obviously is an away game um, and until last Sunday, the home form had been a bit dodgy but away from home you've won eight games I mean what is it that's so incredible what was your team talk or what is it that away from home you have no problem winning football matches I wouldn't say that we have no problem winning football matches but for any reason I don't know why uh, we, we won more away than home but uh, yeah we don't do anything different so we are preparing as, as hard as possible we are focusing on the opponent as much as possible um, uh, only the the, the the way the the games went away that was a little bit different. We very often uh, uh, get get winning one zero and then and then it's easier to play. Yeah, when you when you shoot the, when you make the first goal, it's easier. When you concede the first one, like we were always at home, then it is very difficult. So it was maybe the biggest change, the biggest difference. But I think the pitches are have the same size. The goals are not smaller or bigger. So if we go there, normally there's not a coin, not not a, not a different, but uh, yeah, I think they are focused. The guys when we when we go away, they are also focused at home, hopefully. But but uh, yeah, it's the whole story in this season. Yeah? It's it's not always uh, easy to explain why it is like this. But uh, yeah, it's important that we now also have one at home, so this is not such a top topic for us. Earlier, you asked about Jack Stevens, who's been at the club for a long time. So too has James Ward Prowse, and since you've given them the captaincy, I mean. I think he's a very special player anyway. He's free kicks and set pieces. But since you get him in the captaincy, he seems to have taken his game up even another level. Yes, uh, to be honest, this was a reaction I, 
I hoped for um, because he needed to have more responsibility and uh, he was demanding for that and um, I gave him now the chance to be uh, this captain. I know that it's a big uh, honor in, in England uh, to be captain of a, of a football team. And I must say, to be a leader, for me, it's, it's, it's more than only speaking in the dressing room before the game or after the game. It's, it's more important for me to show on the pitch that you are a leader, that you take responsibility, that you have an unbelievable workload. And I think it's not coincidence that he, he broke the 13 kilometers on the weekend. So it was unbelievable uh, uh, covering distance, uh, high intensity runnings and everything by far the most of, of our team. And yeah, this is also a sign for a leader. If you, if you only speak and don't perform and don't show on the pitch that you are a leader, then it, uh, it, it will not work for, for, for long. Eh? So uh, you must show that you, you want to, to take responsibility on the pitch and that he does this. And uh, so um, for, his, for his age, he is in a, on a good way, I think. Well, I know it's a lot of ifs, but if you beat Everton, if West Ham beat Burnley, suddenly you could be up into the top 10. Um, is it too late if you win all your games to have ambitions of maybe a, having a say in getting into Europa League spot this season? That is also normal. When you win two games, everybody's dreaming of Europe. They can't dream the people, no problem. Uh, uh, we let them dream. Uh, for us, it's important that we stay awake and then um, concentrate on our job. But, uh, yeah, you can do it, no problem. Thank you. Well, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'll move on to the second section, uh, embargo to 10.30 this evening. And we'll start off with Dan at the Echo. Thank you, Jordan. Hi, Ralph. Hello. In the immediate section there, you touched on this would be the first time that you'd have won three games in a row uh, as the club's manager. What would that mean for you to be able to achieve that and for the team? Well, I think not only for me, but also for the guy. guys. It would mean that we find some really consistent performance because uh, the fixture against Man City, you have to have a fantastic game. And now against Evan, it's not easier. I think... For everybody, this we always always speaking about that we showed in some terms that we can be really competitive, also with the big clubs. But then we had also uh, easy giving away points, uh, and this we must stop. And uh, I think um, it's a good chance now, a good chance to to show ourselves that we that we are um, again now one step ahead of, of our development, and uh, and then we can we can maybe surprise ourselves with 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 uh, this third win in a row and it's a quite tough game eh? and uh, yeah we know that we have uh, a chance to overtake them with with a, with a win so uh, the most important thing is not too much concentrating on what we can do and more on what we have to do to win games eh? and this is uh, what i i tried to, to to put the focus on and this helped us in our very difficult time in autumn to concentrate on our strength and our behaviors on the pitch that in the end uh, gives you more chances to win the game and uh, the rest about position on the table uh, in the end of the season, whatever, comes by the way. You mentioned that your focus is normally on what you have to do to win games, which sounds like quite a clinical process. So when you're assessing a team like Everton, without giving any tactics away, what do you have to do to beat them? Yeah, I think uh, especially it's important to be honest online when uh, they win the ball, they have a very quick transition to, to strike us with uh, a lot of pace. Uh, good organized against the ball and very brave with the ball. So when you want to press them, then you must do it really committed, really together. And even then you have the goalkeeper who can kick the ball very long. So you have to be aware of everything. It's like we have to we have been against Man City because it was, uh, yeah. It, is, it's, it sounds stupid, but it was nearly the same. It was it is, uh, well, both teams with a lot of quality on the ball. And for us, that means that we have to have a perfect performance against the ball. That's great. Thank you. Good luck for Thursday. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. We'll go to Tom at the Sun. Hi, Ralph. Hello. I was looking at your head-to-head uh, -head record with Carlo Ancelotti, and the first game you had was was quite a uh, special match, you might remember it, it was 5-4 uh, 
and they got a couple of goals in the 90th yeah. minute. So obviously, pretty not not the best game in the end, but oh, yes. a thriller. Tell me about that game. What do you remember from it, and how much you know? Can we expect something similar? I, I really remember this game very much because it was for me the most intense game I've ever played as a manager and maybe one of the best, although we lost this game in the end because it was everybody went out of the stadium. I, I remember it was the last home game in this season. We were safe from position two and uh, so we had a really a little bit putting the tactic away and show everybody what, what, you, can do, what you can do, especially in offensive transition and we have been a very strong we were 4-2 up I think 15 minutes to go and then we lost 5-4 so the end was not quite nice uh, they really boosted us away especially Robin I know he, he scored a fantastic goal in the end winning the ball and then we, we lost this game it was, but I wasn't really sad about that because it was so intense and every, every, every people who was in the stadium I think he was so proud to be there because you never forget this game and me too it was I was, it was so intense that I think I needed two, three days to, to, to take a rest after this game because it was unbelievable, really. I know you still have your targets for this season, but you are safe and so are Everton. Europa League could be a possibility, but maybe there's a, a similarity there where the handbrake can be taken off for a game like this in the same way it was in that match. Uh, a, a what, a hand? Uh, I mean, as I in, saw. you can go for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I think um, for us it, 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 it's an absolutely intense time in the moment. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we were we were choking today at lunch. We said uh, normally we don't need to have a break after this uh, intense time because we are now in a good mode, and the, the best would be to keep it going and, and start immediately the next season for us. Huh? So, but I think uh, yeah. We will have a short break and a short preseason for the next season, and this next season will come definitely. And then we have to have a better start than this than this season. And uh, this is the goal. And the moment is uh, the, the whole focus lies on on the last games to get as, as many points as possible and climb a few positions if it's possible. But also have this this good feeling if you finish a season with some success that you say, okay, we know now what we have to do. We know now what level we have, and, and this will build up in the next season. And this is uh, the most important to have a, a very good finish now. Just, just finally, um, Che Adams obviously scored that fantastic goal. There was interest from Leeds in January, but you were very keen to keep hold of him despite not playing him that much at the time. First of all, is this showing you know why you wanted to keep hold on to him so strongly? But also, how difficult was he to battle or, or easy to manage during that period when he wasn't in the team? Uh, I really must say that. Um, it was definitely not easy for him. Uh, it must, was much easier for me because for a manager, it's always easy to have somebody on the bench who is always positive, who always gives everything in, the, in every session. And even if he doesn't score and if things don't go easy for him, um, uh, to bring him then to know that he has quality and that he has quality, I always said that he can, can help you. But this was, he was a little bit cramped to must make this first goal and I think this is not always helpful for a striker eh? and that's sometimes you, you, you don't see the better posted man, the better positioned man and, and then you, you make the wrong decisions and you be egoistic and, and whatever. But I think uh, as you can see that also the team was always believing in him and, and they were very happy that he scored and he has such a good standing in the, inside the team. I think he feels quite comfortable in this club and, and uh, comfortable is maybe the wrong word. He, he likes to be here, but he likes more to, to be here and help the team winning. And this was the first time with a goal that he helped. He had helped very often with coming in, with bringing assists. He had a few assists for Ingsy so far, and, but never scored himself. And so everybody was very, very happy that he now yeah, uh, opened the box and hopefully they're coming out a few more goals. Thank you very much, Rob. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. We'll go to Carl at the Athletic. Hello, Ralph. Hello. Good to okay. see you again. Um, right. I want to talk a little bit about Everton. They played 4 4 2 yesterday, uh, a formation they use quite common. Does your approach to defending change when the opponent plays with two strikers? Uh, no, not at all. Um, 
Um, what is interesting is the way the build up uh, that can be very variable and that gives you some some things to be aware of and uh, then you must uh, maybe react during this game and change it a little bit it can be possible and yeah against the ball they have some, uh, their habits and it's it doesn't change in, in general our our game against the ball our game with the ball sometimes a little bit adapting to to when they attack with two strikers this is normal for, for football today. There have been previous games where Southampton haven't had the best results with teams that play two up front, Wolverhampton, West Ham uh, and Burnley. Um, do you try and, when you talk about making adaptations with the ball, is that in the sixth position or? Interesting uh, message you sent to me here. <laughs> I haven't seen it from that far there, to be honest. Eh? Um, yeah, I think we had also against the uh, teams with two strikers some interesting, very good uh, moments when I remember the movement we were two up on the half time. So uh, not really a bad game from our side, but you're right. Uh, we in the end uh, lost this game. Uh, and uh, This is definitely something. Yeah, but we will not change to back three or something like that. So this will, will not happen. So we will see. I think it's important uh, uh, that we, we do it uh, better or good, uh, in, in especially against the ball. And uh, we have some yeah, some uh, automatism we need to have against two strikers and this we were working on, especially on videos, I think on the pitch we cannot do it that often, I think only one session tomorrow, but a little bit maybe showing them the behaviours we need to have. Speaking of videos, one player that seems to be getting braver and braver is uh, Kai Walker-Peters. He seems to be getting down the right-hand side a bit more. Uh, is there any developments in possible changes whether he'll stay at the club long term? Yeah. Very happy to see this that he uh, adapts now to, to our game. Uh, he took the chance with both hands and showed uh, some good performances, um, especially on, on, on Sunday. It was very difficult against his opponent. He had uh, some very good defensive actions also with the ball. He showed some good moves. Yeah, he's on a good way. Uh, he must stay hungry and must show up until the end of the season, and then he can decide. We haven't done it yet. What to do with him? Uh, still a player from from Tottenham, and uh, then we can we can decide. And uh, one final question for me, just simply about Musa Ginepo. Obviously, how is he uh, managing with these constant back and forth in around playing football at the moment? No, it's difficult because um, at first he was suspended, now he's injured. For a young lad like him uh, who is uh, living alone here, it's never easy. We really have to take care about him. Hopefully, he's back uh, good soon. And, uh, don't lose his, his positive uh, mindset. He's a very happy character and everyone seems to enjoy him. Yeah, Thank you very much and uh, good luck for Thursday. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Neil at the mirror. Yeah, hi Ralph. Hi. Hi, just wanted to pick up, um, you've spoken a little bit about Carlo already. Just, just what you see his, his biggest strength as a coach. And also, do you feel as it's... Um, one of the attractions of the Premier League as a manager that you go from Sunday pitting your wits against Pep Guardiola, one Champions League winner, to Ancelotti, your next game, another guy who's won it, you know, three times as well. Yes, this is definitely something you really enjoy as a manager in the Premier League, that you have every week a, a big challenge. It's, it's quite interesting to analyse the opponents. It's quite interesting to... To find a game plan against the next, if you want, Champions League winner or wants everything, and uh, it's it's absolutely what makes the Premier League so special. I think in no other league in the world you have this, and it makes the job so interesting. I'm absolutely with you. Yeah, this is definitely, um, yeah, one of the most interesting things in our job in the moment. Yeah. And just particular with Carlo, what particular challenges? You can give away as much as you like, but just the way he sets up his team. Uh, is there anything particular you think that's a Carlo Ancelotti team from that you see from Bayern Munich to Everton now, for example? Yeah, I, was, I think uh, the team is always very good organized. He's an Italian coach, uh, so the defense work is, is, I think, always in the center of his, of his uh, yeah, intention. But also with the game with the ball is, is structured and, and uh, brave and, and uh, they really try to build up. And uh, they have some good footballers in the in the in the uh, in the side, but a few problems with injuries. Uh, when you saw it on, on yesterday, two players were out with, with muscle injuries or 
And uh, yeah, we don't know 100% what team we have to expect, uh, but uh, for sure a team with quality. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. We'll go to Robert at Hampshire Live. Hi, Rav. Hello. Um, you say Pierre might be back for um, in the squad for, for the game on Thursday. Um, what, what do you want to see from him in, in the next few weeks? I know you mentioned a couple, you know, a couple of weeks ago before the restart that he can still be an important player. Obviously, there's the, the speculation of his future. But Oriol Romeo has come in and done well in the last few couple of games. James Will Prowse, you mentioned, is, is playing very well. What, what does Pierre have to do now to try and get back into the side? Yeah, I think uh, you're right. We, we did a fantastic job with Ori and Browse in this position. But as I mentioned before, uh, we, our schedule is, our fixtures are quite tough and uh, we have not a lot of time to, to rest there. I know that Ori and Browse is fit and, and uh, they can also play three games in a week, but it's very good to have Pia back, uh, fit back. And then you have an, another alternative. You can also play maybe another position or maybe you want to change the shape or whatever. So it would be uh, important for him uh, to be fit again and, and then he can help us wherever he wherever I decide that he does it. And uh, I'm happy that he's back. Thank you. 